Hello, thank you for joining me in this AWS Summit online session. Today we're going to talk about building cloud skills for the digital economy in El Salvador. We have a very special guest, the Minister of Economy of El Salvador, who will share with us her cloud journey in getting young people trained and prepared for the cloud jobs of tomorrow. Um, my name is Hilary Foster, and I'm the Education Programs Lead for Latin America, Canada, and the Caribbean of Amazon Web Services. Um, we started this initiative last year because of the, the, the vision of the minister who said to me, Hillary, what can we possibly do to make sure that students take full advantage of this strange time in history to learn, get certified, get ready for jobs? Um, so it was really fantastic to work with her who had this you know, very clear vision of making a, a, a tough situation uh, really be useful for the young people of El Salvador. We had basically three objectives for this project. We wanted to be training students in cloud skills. We wanted to be developing the right uh, sort of set of capabilities that were very clearly aligned to the jobs of the future. And we also wanted to be inspiring young people to innovate and build solutions. Um, in all three counts, we had a lot of different resources that came in and, and, and were used, but I'm, I'm most proud of the way that we were able to make use of the local talent in El Salvador. We had Amazon partners from El Salvador participate in webinars and share what they were building and working on, what kind of skill profiles they were looking for. We had young entrepreneurs from El Salvador talking about their ideas for businesses and how they used cloud services to bring those ideas into real life. We had great support from the Amazon community of uh, Amazonians who are from El Salvador who pitched in and created a special video to encourage the student participants and share their own stories of why cloud computing is a critical skill. Um, so we had Salvadorians in Japan, in Spain, in Germany, all coming together to cheer on the student participants. Uh, I'm gonna start out today uh, giving a little more context about this initiative and the two different AWS programs that we used, uh, AWS Educate and AWS Academy. Then I'm gonna pass over the presentation to the minister uh, who will share a little bit more about her vision for workforce development and how cloud skills sort of fit into that. Um, it's sort of her experience of being the, the uh, main coordinating body for this initiative. And finally, we're going to have a special opportunity to hear from one of the participants who will share uh, her sort of enthusiasm for what this program has meant for her and the, the academic and professional opportunities that it's opened up. First of all, the, the context of why we started this program. We understand in, in the industry that there is a very significant skills gap. So 90% of organizations report severe shortages in, in talent. Uh, about 80% of IT decision makers uh, say that there is a significant skills gap in uh, the, the cloud computing skills that they need in their uh, organizations. So both AWS Academy and AWS Educate were created to really take on that gap and support academic institutions, universities, colleges, uh, vocational high schools, in closing that gap. These programs uh, were designed to uh, sort of start work backwards from the needs of the industry and to provide all of the tools and resources that universities need. We talk with a lot of professors who say, you know, I really am excited to share, you know, the sort of possibilities that the cloud brings, but it's challenging. I have a full-time job. How can I possibly keep up with all of the innovation, all of the releases from AWS? So both Educate and Academy take care of updating curriculum so that it's a lighter, a lighter lift for professors so they can sort of use our pre-created content and, and get their students to a, a, the next level in cloud computing. Uh, both of these programs are designed to provide content, practical experience, and, and AWS Academy also provides that path to certification, which we know is so important to distinguish yourself um, 
in the, the job market. I'm going to start out by sharing a little bit about AWS Educate. Educate is an online portal where you can access 12 different career pathways, ranging from Cloud 101, if you're just getting started and want to understand the basics of cloud computing. Uh, we also have cybersecurity specialists. We have machine learning scientists. We, there's a special um, data analytics course. So all of these pathways have videos, laboratories, and uh, other learning experience, documents that explain how to create solutions. In addition to all of those pathways, we offer badges, which are sort of bite-sized content um, on some of our emerging technologies, such as Alexa or autonomous vehicles. Uh, finally, we have, there's a job board that uh, AWS Educate has because we want to make sure that students can be connected to the employers that are working, looking for talent like them. Uh, there are jobs and internships on that job board. AWS Academy is a program that focuses on preparing professors to provide official AWS content in their classrooms. We provide all the training materials for professors, and then once a professor becomes certified, that professor can go on and use official AWS curriculum in their courses. The great thing about Academy is that the courses align all to our certifications. We offer a 50% discount for students who go through an AWS Academy course and are ready at the end to get certified. I'm going to wrap up here with some of the reflections that students have on what AWS Educate and AWS Academy has meant to them in their professional careers and, and as they think about uh, getting the, the knowledge and the skills that they'll need for the next step uh, after graduation. Um, with that, I'm going to pass the, the, the presentation on to Minister Iam. It's been such a great pleasure to be working with you, and we are so grateful for all that you have provided to this initiative and the investments that you've made. And we look forward to continuing to work with you and make an impact for students together. Over to you, Minister Iam. Thank you, Hillary. I'm happy to be here today and share about our joint project, Cloud Skills for El Salvador, which integrates three topics that I'm very passionate about, education, technology, and youth. Before going into the project, I would like to share a little bit about El Salvador. El Salvador is located in Central America and in a small area about 21,000 square kilometer, kilometers lives around 6 million people, known for being very hardworking. We have a workforce of nearly 3 million people, of which just over half are under the age of 40. Because of its geostrategic location, El Salvador spends half of the year in the Central Standard Time Zone and the other half of the year in the Mountain Standard Time Zone. This allows us to work in perfect synchrony with different companies in South and North America. The country is regarded as having one of the most neutral English accents in the world, and I couldn't move forward without mentioning surf. El Salvador is known for being a great place for surfing. El Salvador also has a great potential in offshore business services. The services sectors contribute in more than 70% of our GDP. Only the ICT sector represents 31.7% of our foreign direct investment, generating about 29,000 direct jobs. Among the companies, the foreign companies that are established in El Salvador, are Ubiquity, OneLink, Sykes, Atento, Telos, Teleperformance, Blackhawk, Concentrix, The Office Gurus, and Rulesware. When talking to the management of these companies, there's a common denominator on why they are established in El Salvador and why a lot of these companies are growing. And it's always the labor force. As we can see, energy and work ethics are words that come to mind when talking about El Salvador labor. Excellent skills and qualities, communication skills, and soft skills. 
El Salvador's government has been committed to develop an ecosystem for developing digital and, technolo and technological services. We want to become the hub of digital and technology services in the region. We have identified six areas that are very important to be strengthened in order to provide all the conditions for companies local and international to establish, operate, and grow in El Salvador. These areas are regulatory framework. We already have a robust incentive framework uh, that provides incentives for companies to establish in El Salvador, but we're working in order to reduce bureaucracy and we are providing personalized services for companies in order to be able to establish, operate, and grow in the country. We're also working with different institutions in the government to develop the infrastructure that we need in order to become more competitive. We're working to improve our ports and airports, to improve our road connectivity, but also our digital connectivity. We're already one of the countries in Central America with the highest progress in this area, but we're working to increase the coverage and the quality of our telecommunications companies. We're also very committed to increase actions towards um, improving our research and development and innovation and the adoption and innovation of everything we do. One of the projects that we're currently working on is on, on developing a center for innovation that will allow us to become that hub of digital and technological services that I mentioned earlier. In terms of market opportunities, El Salvador is very well integrated with the whole world. We have free trade agreements with more than 10 countries, which opens preferential access with more than 42 countries. Financing is one of the barriers to growth uh, in this sector uh, locally, and this is one area that we're currently also working together with international organizations in order to expand the access and quality of financial services. Another, another area that we're working together with the, minist with the Ministry of Education and the Secretariat of Innovation of El Salvador is to create a human talent that responds to the, the response to the demand of the productive sector, but also that labor that we need for today and the future. Going into the project, we started conversations with Amazon Web Services team less than a year ago, and in the midst of the pandemic, this project aimed to expand the access of technology training to youth in El Salvador. I'm happy to report that as of today, 16 higher education institutions have joined this program, allowing a large coverage of this training throughout the country. 2,500 students have enrolled and completed the Cloud Center pathways. The top six pathway skills chosen by students are cloud computing, application developer, cloud support associate, cloud support engineer, machine learning scientist, and web develop development engineer. We're very glad with the results that we have achieved, but we're committed to keep expanding the coverage of this project, but also to connect the human, tal the human talent created through this project with industry locally and internationally. Also to certify the labor competencies of students so that they have more opportunities ahead. But the best way to get to know a project is through the words of a beneficiary. And now I would like to share a video of an experience lived through this project. Mi nombre es Jacqueline Hernández y soy del Departamento de la Libertad. Estudio en la Universidad Francisco Gaviria el quinto año de Ingeniería en Telecomunicaciones. Me enteré de la iniciativa de habilidades en la nube a través de la publicidad de la universidad en su página web. Y decidí participar porque pues yo no tenía mayor conocimiento acerca de la nube. Entonces creí que era una excelente oportunidad para mejorar mis habilidades. El primer curso que realicé fue Cloud 101, que es una introducción a la infraestructura de la nube. Todos esos conocimientos, todos los cursos y las insignias que he obtenido, todos me han ayudado a formarme mejor como un profesional de calidad. Definitivamente, Habilidades en la Nube es un programa que viene a beneficiar a todo aquel que desee superarse, que desee mejorar su calidad de vida. 
me encantaría extender una invitación para que todas las personas formen parte del programa de habilidades de la nube. Es una experiencia increíble y se la recomiendo a cualquiera que, te, que tenga ganas de superarse porque es un autoaprendizaje increíble. Además, se les va a traer excelentes beneficios no solo a su carrera estudiantil, también a su carrera profesional. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Amazon Web Services team, for working with us in order to transform lives of youth and transform our country. Back to you, Hillary. Thank you so much, Minister Ayam. We want to reiterate our, our appreciation for all that you've done to support this initiative. And we look forward to working with you in the future on um, helping the young people of El Salvador. To conclude today's session, I want to invite you to check out the two programs that I've mentioned, AWS Academy and AWS Educate. For more information on AWS Academy, just visit www.awsacademy.com. Likewise, for AWS Educate, it's awseducate.com. There, if you are an educational institution, a university, a professor, or a student, uh, you'll be able to find more information and learn how you can join uh, one of these programs. So thanks again for joining. Uh, in summary, now is the time to think about and take action on building cloud skills for the next generation. We know that there's a huge need in the industry and uh, on our part, we are here at the ready to work with you to find ways of making sure that students are coming out and graduating ready for the workforce. We want to thank uh, all of the participants of our initiative, all of the universities, uh, the Ministry of Economy, and um, really thank you for your interest in this panel today. Uh, I have one more quick question or quick inquiry, quick thing to ask of you. If you could just take two minutes to complete our survey, uh, that's a great way for us to learn what we're doing well, how can we improve, uh, and to hear from you directly. So please go ahead and take that survey. Thanks for watching today's session. It's been a great pleasure to speak.